What's popping, guys? Welcome back to a brand new Bee Swarm video. So today I was just about to record a video on a Blue Hive guide, and currently there is an emergency reboot that's gonna happen in exactly a minute. So I'll wait for this and see what's happening, and I'll catch you guys up on that, and then we can start the video. So let's see what happens. In any high bee choose, of course you would want that basic bee, or that gifted buff, and then bomber bee. So bomber bee you do not need because although it does give bomb pollen, and in blue hives you do get a lot of bomb pollen, you do not need it because it fills up your bag too quickly. So for brave bee, this depends on your passives. If you're running a gummy pop, you will not need a brave bee. But if you are running a pop saw, you will need a brave bee because the star saw runs on damage and the brave bee gifted hive bonus helps with your hive damage a lot. So it will convert a lot more to your hive. So if you are running a pop saw, definitely get yourself a brave bee. Bumblebee. So for a hard blue hive, I would recommend having a bumblebee because they do give a lot of new bomb pollen. And with a hard blue hive, you'll be having more bumblebees and ninja bees, which will, having, which will be getting more value out of that. Cool bee, so you would want this cool bee because 10% blue pollen, although some people say it's not noticeable, it's, it's still there in the background helping you, and 10% blue pollen is very important, so I would keep a cool bee. Hasty bee, you surprisingly do not need actually, because if you're having all these ninja bees in your hive, you do not need that extra speed because you'll basically be having max haste unless you have a tornado that just spawned or something, so you do not need a hasty bee. Looker bee, important for every single hive because that critical power is very important and it drops focus which is helpful. So keep a gifted looker bee, red and rascal, red bees, obviously you do not need them. Now stubborn bee, this really depends on how quickly you can reach your tokens. Of course if you can't reach them, maybe have it because it does give the ability to token lifespan. And yes, right now Onet did say he fixed it so it should be working, I didn't test it out but I'm pretty sure stubborn bees gifted hive bonus should work now. So if you can't reach your tokens, Try to keep a stubborn bee in your hive. Bubble bee. So, bubble bee is actually very important because it's gifted bubble bee gives 50% chance to spawn bubbles in this gathering, which is really good. It's just a smaller tadpole bee, but it's also better than tadpole bee because they can also give blue bomb pollen, which activates your pop star, which will help you activate your pop star a lot more frequently if you have more bubble bees. And it's recommended to have three to five but I did have some extra space left over in my hive, so I did take six, and if you can have more, it's better, but of course there's certain limits, so I wouldn't say any more than six. So three to five is optimal, I just have six because it helps. So, Pucko Bee, keep one because it gives more blue pollen, as I said before, some people don't like it, but for hard blue hives, it's pretty important. Commander Bee, so in every single hive, you're probably going to want a Commander Bee because that critical chance is very important. Demo Bee, you're not going to need. Again, bomb pollen in general fills up your hive too fast, or your container too fast, sorry. Exhausted bee, buzz bomb pollen, you don't really need that because, again, fills up your container too quickly. Fire bee, red bee, you don't need it. Frosty bee, again, for a hard red hive, I would keep one frosty bee because it does give blue bomb pollen. And all these blue bees, all these blue gifted bees that you're keeping, are contributing more to your diamond drain because it the amount you drain depends on gifted blue bee type you have so these blue types do contribute to your diamond drain a lot more which is why i think a hard blue hive is more valuable than a blue and white mix but again i'll go over the mix later so honeybee this again depends on your passive so if you have pop and saw you do not need a honeybee because you're Honey tokens are not going to be helping much, but if you are running a gummy pop, your gummy star will be dropping a lot of honey tokens, and the extra 50% honey tokens will help a lot if you did gather a lot from that star, gummy star. So if you're running a gummy pop, keep it. Gummy saw, you're not going to. Or not gummy saw, sorry. Pop saw, you're not going to need it. Rage bee, again, this is basically the same as the brave bee in the bee attack, so if you're running a pop saw, keep it. If you're running a gummy pop or just a regular pop, you're not going to need that rage bee. Riley bee, red bee, you're not going to need. Shock bee, you're not going to need. Even in a blue-white mix, you're probably not going to need a shock bee because white pollen is for white hives, and even if you're going for the blue-white mix, 
you're still going to mainly be collecting blue pollen, so this is not going to help much and you lose the space in your hive. So Baby Bee, its loot luck is very good, but you're not going to need it if you have a bunch of gifted tadpole bees. So this really depends on how many gifted tadpole bees you have, and if you want that loot luck, if you're killing a lot of mobs, then you may want it, but for me, I mainly farm for honey in the field, so I do not have a baby bee. Carpenter Bee, you don't really need unless you're going for the white-blue mix. If you're going for the blue-white mix, then you're going to want one to three of them, and that's because they help with the mark tokens, and then the vector bees will get a lot of value out of those mark tokens, so if you're doing the mix, keep one to three of them, and if you're just going solid blue, you're not going to need carpenter bee. Demon Bee is really bad. Diamond Bee, so for a hard blue hive, I kept it because again, it helps with the diamond drain, and the convert rate does help a little bit, so I did keep it, but if you're going for a white-blue mix, you're probably better off not keeping a Diamond Bee. So guys, now Lion Bee, I do not think you'll be needing, even if you are going for a blue-white mix, because if you are choosing a blue hive, you will not be having much attack, so I will not keep a Lion Bee. Music Bee, you want three of them, and you do want them to have the B ability rate mutation because that does help with them spawning Melody, and it would also help if you have the toy horns, give the other bees so that they can help spawn Melody too. Okay guys, so now we will be talking about Ninja Bee. Ninja Bee is very important because it will be stacking up all the haste, and it will be picking up the slack of you not having a hasty bee, so that'll be important. But on top of that, it does drop Blue Bomb Plus, which will which will also contribute to the pop star activation. So this is also very important. Ninja Bee, I would recommend having five to seven of them. Six to seven is the most ideal, but five could work. And yeah, that's basically it for Ninja Bee, and they do help a lot with the pop star activation. Shy Bee, you will, be not, you, you will not be needing, because again, it's a red bee, and it'll be helping with red pollen. Fuzzy Bee, I would say keep three of them, because they do collect some decent pollen, and and the blue hives, the pollination is pretty important because there's no main way to collect pollen. In red hives, there's flames that help a lot, and then in white hives, there's triangulate, which quickly, quickly pick up so much pollen. But blue hive bubbles don't do that much, and they only help when their pop star is active. So that's one reason why blue is so weak, and this is why you probably need three fuzzy bees to help pick up more pollen. Spicy Bee, of course, Red Mythic, you will be, not be needing that. And Tadpole Bees, I'd say you'd want 12 to 14 Tadpole Bees. I've seen some hives with 10 Tadpole Bees, but I think that's a little too, too little, so I would think 12 to 14 is good. 16 at most if you really want those bubbles, but anything more than 16 would just be taking up too much space in the hive. Vector Bee, so again, like I said, if you want a hard blue hive, you're probably better off just keeping one vector bee, but if you're going for a blue-white mix, I would keep five to seven vector bees, depending on how how balanced you want the blue and white to be. And next, of course, are the events. So I kept all the events; they're very good, and I kept all of them but the crimson bee. And again, ooh, a gummy sprout. I'll go get that later. But anyways, crimson bee, I did not keep. You can keep depending on how good your uh, blue pulse is and you just go into the field and see how much pollen you get from that if you get a lot of pollen then you could keep it because the crimson bee basically just doubles it if you have the cobalt bee as well then it just fires the blue pulse twice as often so if that blue pulse really benefits your hive i'd say keep a crimson bee other than that i wouldn't keep it and for me it didn't do much so i didn't keep my crimson bee. we can now go over the mutations so in general B ability rate is the best mutation for every single B, and I'm assuming this for every single hive out there as well, white or red. B ability rate is super important, so try to get that if you can, but it of course is the rarest mutation, so it's probably going to be hard for you guys to get every single B, um, B ability rate mutation. So the second best mutation in my opinion for farming would be gather amount, it's the light green one right here, and this is not as rare, it's one of the more common ones, but it still helps a lot. I would get it on my Tadpole Bee and my Tabby Bee because Tabby Bee, the scratch does collect a ton of pollen, so definitely get gather amount on the Tabby Bee and try to get it on your Tadpole Bees or Vector Bees if you're doing a blue and white split. 
and on top of that, attack is decent on the tadpole, although I would more I would prefer to have the gather amount because people do say the attack on tadpole helps with the frogs attacking the mobs, but from personal experience, 90% of the times the frogs just ignore the mobs and just keep smiling bubbles, which is very annoying and blue still sucks with attack, so I wouldn't get attack on tadpole personally and I would try to work for that collection. So that's basically it for the mutations, the energy and conversion is actually not too great. So now that we are finished with that, I can go over how to bloat. So the best field for bloating is strawberry and this is because you collect the least and you do not want to put a sprinkler because that also helps you collect and what you want to do while you bloat is collect the least so you have to go back to your hive um, as, as little as possible so they can bloat more in the field. So how bloating works is just you have to collect 30 blue bomb tokens it can be plus as well from the ninja bees so this is why bubble bees and ninja bees are so important at blue hive and it activates the pop star a lot more and once you activate the pop star then it'll have a star floating around your head for 45 seconds as you pop more bubbles it'll grow and i think it stops growing at 250 bubbles popped and basically how it works is every bubble you pop adds four seconds to your bloat and bloat adds up as you pop more bubbles and the max bloat is seven or three hours in time and it decreases um over time so this is why bloat is very annoying to build up before each um before each boost and sometimes if you just bloat by yourself in strawberry field it could take up to hour an hour to bloat which is very annoying and this is why you want to do it with a friend because um other players bubbles actually do count towards your bloat but they only count towards one second instead of four. So although it doesn't help as much as your own bubbles, it does still help a ton with bloating. It still racks up really fast, and you can save so much time with bloating in a field with other blue players. So if you are trying to bloat, definitely try bloating as a group because it bloats much faster. And one thing I've recently noticed about the bloat is as you see the bar go up, it actually seems to hit four as you reach the middle and then it goes up to seven and this used to confuse me but if you guys didn't know it actually starts off at one so you gotta imagine it as six instead of seven times bloat because it has to have 100 percent as a base so then you have to add three to one which is why it reaches half at four and then seven at max which is somewhat confusing but it made sense as you think about it so anyways now that we're done with the bloating you just want to get that to max and as you can see my bloat isn't too great but once you get it to max it's going to help a lot in blue fields with your capacity and once you finish bloating you can start farming in a field so by far the best blue field alone is stump field and currently my stump snail is there but stump field is the best field to bloat in or not bloat in sorry to farm in and my stump snail is pretty annoying and that's one thing you want to make sure of before you boost to make sure your stump snail is dead because if it respawns it basically just ruins your boost like completely so definitely make sure your stump snail is dead before you start boosting and if you do get a stump boost that is great because it is far better than pine tree or bamboo or blue flower field this is mainly because it does have high level flowers and although it does have a few red flowers it is much smaller than pine and this is because or it's much smaller than all blue flowers and, um, blue flower fields in general and this is good because you want to pop as many bubbles as you can, and the smaller field restricts the frog movement, which means you can move around and pop more bubbles, and the bubbles will be more condensed, which will be easier for you to pop. So, once you got that down, it also helps because if you have a really good Supreme Star amulet, it like gives 60% stump field pollen if you get a really good amulet, which is insane when you're boosting. 60% pollen buff is a huge buff, and this is again a reason why stump, the stump field is so good. One downside to the stump field is that the blue booster in the blue HQ does not give any stump boost and it only gives blue flower, bamboo, or pine. So that's one downside. You may have to get lucky on your RNG on the dice, but thankfully Onet did talk about that. He said blue had to get really lucky with RNG and um, in the next update, he says he's going to try to make RNG less intensive so that it's not completely luck based. And it'll also be somewhat skill based. So anyways, definitely try to go for stump. And if you can't go for stump, try to go for pine. If you can't go for pine, try to go for blue flower field. And 
personally, I don't like the blue, uh, not the blue fire, sorry. Personally, I don't like the bamboo field, and this is because bamboo field uh, spawns two rhino beetles every two minutes, which, which can really disturb your boost, so personally, rhino beetles are annoying when they spawn during the boost, which is why I don't like bamboo that much. But yes, that's basically it for the blue hives, and now I can just talk about activating your passives, and that's basically it for this video. So guys, as for your passives, Popstar is basic because it's just collecting bomb tokens and your token links, and you want to actually activate this as much as you can because when you do get it to 250 bubbles pop during that time, it actually gives you 4.5 times more blue pollen, which is a high, high, high buff in blue pollen, which is why when Popstar activates, when Star Salt or Gummy Star activates as well, you make so much more honey. So, Popstar, basic, you just collect more bomb tokens, and then that activates more often. So, Gummy Star and Star Saw. So, Star Saw, again, is pretty basic. You just have stingers, and it activates on every third stinger, so you just use two stingers. And then you just eye, you keep an eye on your Popstar, and then once it does hit 30, it activates, and then you use your stinger at the same time, so then your Star Saw and Popstar will be starting at the same time, so you will be converting collecting with the star saw and then your blue your pop star will help with the collection as well which will make you a lot of honey and as for the gummy star there is no real large trick to gummy star because it's all rng you have a two percent chance to summon gummy star each time you use a gumdrop so this is probably why gummy star is really bad when you're afking because it does nothing but anyways in a boost i think you just have auto on um, until your pop star activates because auto on actually doesn't do it every three seconds on the dot Because when lag occurs it does slow down the auto -ing, auto wing of the gumdrops and just auto wing in general Which doesn't exactly use it all um, as, as quickly as you can So I'd say auto it because that'd be easier and then you can focus on your clouds or your jelly beans and whatever while it's auto wing and the only time you want to manually spam the gumdrops is when your pop star is active so then you have um you have a higher chance of spawning a gummy star and if you do manage to summon the gummy star and the pop star at the same time you can make tons and tons of honey and another good thing about the slump field i'm just promoting the slump field so much is when your gummy star pops it sprinkles a bunch of gumdrops and honey tokens all over the field so then, if you're doing it on the stump field, it's so much smaller, you can collect everything so much faster. Compared to like all the other blue field, they're so long, and then you have to run, and you're most likely not going to collect as many tokens as you can. So, yeah, stump field's pretty broken for blue hives, and if you're not boosting in stump, you're making a lot less. Oh my gosh, guys, I am so sorry. I almost ended the video before talking about probably the most important thing for any hive, which is the Supreme Star Amulet. So... Of course, like I said, you want Gummy Star, Pop Star, or Pop Star and Star Saw. And honestly, I'd recommend rolling for the Supreme Star Amulets first because you don't want to start switching to a blue hive and then getting a different color, really good Supreme Star Amulet, and then you have to switch again. So definitely, definitely, definitely roll for the Supreme Star Amulets first because it'll save you a ton of honey. And now that you know that, um, I'm just going to warn you these things are expensive and it all depends on your rng so if your luck is good you can get the best amulet in the game for like 10 billion honey or you can spend literally trillions of honey without getting anything good so i was actually super lucky to get this star amulet in three trillion and i was also really lucky to get two gummy stars and two gummy star pop star amulets in the three trillion so my first gummy star pop star if you don't remember was similar to this except for it was actually it was basically a perfect gummy pop except for instead of blue pollen it was red pollen which is a big big downgrade to the star which is why i rolled another um rolled another gummy pop and this one's a lot better this one is probably a 4 or 4.5 um gummy pop and i'll tell you right now and i can write the stats on the screen the best gummy pop passive and well the best gummy pop and pop saw um stats that you want on your star amulet is blue pollen instant conversion 
B ability rate, pollen from bees, and critical chance. And this is because blue pollen, of course, it's a, especially if you get a high, high percentage, I'm pretty sure 70 or some percentage near 70 is um, the max. The po blue pollen really, really makes a big difference in your grinding and you can feel it. It's the conversion of probably the most, um, second most important stat inside your star, star amulet because especially in gummy pop, if you have blue pollen but you don't have instant conversion, your bag just explodes and you're not going to be able to get so much value out of gummy pop because your bag is filled. So definitely try to get instant conversion, blue pollen, and the next tiers are semi like above average and this is B ability rate and pollen from bees. Personally, I think B ability rate is better than pollen from bees, but pollen from bees is also really good so try to get that. And then critical chance is about the same range as pollen from bees, but then after those really good stats that you want, there's white pollen and pollen which are about the same. I'm pretty sure white pollen is a little better, but they're both a mediocre. And I'm pretty sure convert rates basically useless. I mean, it may help with certain passives in the game as of now in a blue hive, but it doesn't give much value. And I don't know, maybe it'll be more valuable when Ona adds more guards and a, they rely on convert rate. But as of now, it's really bad. But um, even then, this passive that I have so far is super good, and I am glad that I was able to roll it in three trillion honey. And that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you have any questions, you can ask me, and yeah, see you guys.